There's a Switch software update that you do not want to miss. Welcome back friends to Super Switch Go! Just to start it off, I was right, I was right. They finally released when Super Nintendo World is going to open and not to toot, toot, toot my own horn, but it is exactly what I said. We also have some Kirby demo secrets as well as a new update that you want to make sure you have downloaded. All right guys, let's get started. It's a me, a Nicole! We are filming this on Mario Day, which means I am committed to wearing this Mario mustache for as long as it stays on, which feels like is not going to be that long. <laughs> but I did also have to share the best thing I've seen on the internet so far for Mario Day, which was this incredible, super cute photo of the original voice actor of Mario dressed up as Mario. It's so cute. All right, guys, let's get down to business because we have a lot to talk about. Starting off to say, if you have not played the new Kirby demo, you are seriously missing out. I absolutely am in love with this game. Like I can see this being my favorite game of the year. And that's including Breath of the Wild too. I don't know, again, I could see them maybe being tied, but incredible. The graphics look so good on the OLED. I could knock it over it, but they also had different types of gameplay. So you could do spring breeze mode, which was a lot easier. And they also had, you know, the more difficult mode, but you could do that both in single player and collaborative, which again is super detailed for a demo. Not only that, but there are some major elements that I only know because I am obsessed with this demo and I've played it at least three times now that I found each time I've played it. So the first time I completed the demo, there's a screen that pops up that gives you a special download code for different items when you get the actual game. I was like, woo, that's crazy, how fun. And I just kind of, you know, thought that was it, right? I immediately went back to playing it a second time because like I said, I am obsessed. And I found out that your items and like your different like Kirby weapons, if you will, get stronger every time you play me play the demo. No! gets stronger every time you play it. So you have ice powers just the first time around. They're like kind of weak, but the second time you play, they actually get stronger. And this is to show throughout the game, you can actually upgrade Kirby's abilities as well. And I thought that that was really fun that they did that in the demo. I was also just in general, not expecting to see car Kirby like right away. Like I cannot believe you could actually play as car Kirby in the demo. I thought they were just, you know, gonna hide the lead on that and make us wait until the full game came out to actually play that. Mode. Not only that, but the the second time I completed the game, I actually got a completely different code for new downloads again. So the more you play again, the more you're being rewarded, which is really, really cool. I am not going to give away the download codes because I want you to check the game out for yourself. But as far as I know, there are at least two download codes out in the demo. So these download codes, again, are for exclusive items when the game comes out. From the way that they described it on the screen, it looks like the only way to get these items is by completing the demo. So it's like a special little nod to those people who like went above and beyond, which is really fun. Advance Wars 1 and 2 are delayed. I honestly kind of feel like this game is maybe cursed and I'll explain why. So Nintendo recently released a statement saying the following. In light of recent world events, we have made the decision to delay Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, which was originally scheduled for release on Nintendo Switch on April 8th. Please stay tuned for updates on a new release date. Which again, in light of recent world events, as Nintendo stated, makes a lot of sense. And considering a lot of other things going on with Nintendo throughout the world, things definitely kind of add up. Now, the craziest part to me is not just the delay, but the fact that they're actually like fully refunding people who have pre-orders for this game, which means we probably won't be seeing it for a while. Because as we all know, companies, their last resort is always to refund money from previous purchases. And this is not the first time this specific iteration of the game has been delayed either. This game was originally delayed from December of 2021 because Nintendo said the game needed a little more fine tuning. And the reason why I think these games are cursed is because again, earlier when Advance Wars 1 and 2 were coming out, 
they got delayed because of a very significant event. Again, now it seems these games are finally coming out rebooted, and once again, there is a significant world event that is delaying them. Don't worry, guys, we'll keep you updated on this as well, because I know a lot of people were really excited about the revamp of these games. All right, this is straight up the strangest, weirdest, possibly dumbest rumor I have ever heard about Nintendo. Will the Wii self-destruct in 2023? I do not know why this was all over the internet. Like, obviously, this is not true, but for some reason, it took the internet by storm. Basically, this article was just straight up a satire on people's response to the fact that they are closing the Wii U eShop and just like, you know, how upset people were about it. And so they decided to again make a satire like, oh yeah, the Wii U is going to self-destruct. No one can play the Wii U anymore. So if you were worried about this and thought that you needed to get your Wii U out of your house before it's too late, I am happy to say that that is not the case. And it was definitely my favorite fake rumor that I've heard in a while. And now for some possibly bad news. It kind of seems like all signs are pointing to Breath of the Wild 2 being delayed. My heart is breaking, but it makes a lot of sense. And I'm going to go through the evidence with you as to why I feel like it makes a lot of sense. Number one is the fact that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are slated to come out this year. Those are major games. And again, they're kind of set up as like an open world Pokemon game, like the Breath of the Wild, if you will, of Pokemon games. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense that Nintendo would put a game like that in direct competition of Breath of the Wild. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is slated to come out in late 2022. That is the exact date that we have so far. We don't even have anything close to that yet for Breath of the Wild 2, and we've known about it since 2019. It just doesn't seem like to me Nintendo would release, like, air quotes here, competing games during the holiday season that are two, like, giant, similar-esque type games. So to avoid clashing, that would mean that Breath of the Wild 2 would need to release at least a month or two earlier than Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which could possibly, again, knock it out of that prestigious holiday season time frame, which could possibly knock it out of that prestigious, like, holiday time frame, you know, where everybody's, like, shopping and they're picking up games, you know, for their nieces and nephews and for themselves. Number two, just lack of news. Like I said before, we don't even know what point of 2022 this game is coming out. We don't even know the title. Like they haven't even given us straight up the title of this game. Like I said before, it had to release before so that it does not clash with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. You would again think we would be at least hearing an announcement from Nintendo or have significant leaks by now from Nintendo because people would have like actual solid details to be leaking. And who knows, maybe they just pull a Beyonce and they're like, surprise, Breath of the Wild 2 out tomorrow, which I would be ecstatic with. It's just Nintendo is not really like that as a company. And again, this is one of their best selling games like ever as a company. So I could see them wanting to put a lot of marketing materials behind it. And number three, now stick with me here because I'm gonna get really specific, but if you just add up all the games that are coming out this year in 2022, and it's a great thing, we have so many great games coming, there's just straight up no room in the calendar for Breath of the Wild 2. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is set to come out in September. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is supposed to come out late 2022, which again, we can expect November because that's that like prime window. We've still got Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope coming out soon. Not to mention the fact that Kirby and the Forgotten Land is coming out this month in March. So we've basically got spring covered. We've got summer from Splatoon 3 also covered. And now we've got ball covered and it just doesn't seem again like there would be any space to give Breath of the Wild to its own moment between that. And truly, again, like if we're really getting down to the nitty gritty, pretty much just October or December, which again are kind of off months for games and does not make sense for a giant 
title release. I don't know, I feel like I've been holding out hope for a really long time because I really, really do want this game to come out. And I hope that I'm wrong, but I feel like if you just look at the facts, like it's not looking good. And who knows, maybe by the time it does come out, we'll finally have that elusive 4K gameplay to play it on. You definitely do not want to miss this Nintendo Switch Online software update. So they actually made the app so much better. There are some small changes, but I think the big thing for me is the friend code update. I'll explain why. So if you don't know, Nintendo actually has a separate mobile app that you can use with your Switch. So it's a lot easier for, say, if you're like chatting with other people so that way you don't have to like bring your Joy-Con cursor like over to each letter. You can just like type on your phone like a normal person. Even though it still brought ease, there was still like a lot of like not so great things about it, if you will. One of the smallest things about this is that you can actually view online status from the app, which is like, Woo, fun, and you can change it. But again, the biggest thing for me is friend codes because I hate having to type out friend codes. They are so long, but now it's simplified. So now instead to share your friend code, you can actually just copy it from the app instead of having to send it out. Now your friend will still have to manually type it into their Switch, but at least there's less work for you. And that is progress. Anything that lets me be a little bit lazy, I love it. But it seems like Mies are making a comeback on the mobile Mario Kart app. There are actually more customizable and costume versions coming to the app, which again, makes a lot of sense because Nintendo Switch Sports is coming out very soon, which again, I feel like we're going to see the like the new era of the me but will they even be called me's anymore because before it was like we and me it was like a pun but i have no idea what the pun on a switch would be because like before me's were like a pun on like the we, you know, it's like the we and the me's, but like nothing rhymes with switches, okay? I can't say check out my little bits on my switches. It doesn't work. I feel like they gotta give us like a new official nickname, okay? Because until then, I feel like I'm just forced to call them that.